as I said here, we live in this home office environment and you're in this epic show about going to the moon and that. And my vanity is overcoming me because I just keep looking at my huge moon forehead and I'm trying to brush my hair down and I'm like, oh my goodness, and I've got the light on. It looks like, I'm just like I'm, I've just landed you're on the moon. You're far too hard. You're far too yeah. hard on yourself. Yeah, Don't even I'm, start. It's madness. But uh, you know, I'm I, just I love proud you. of you for getting out of your PJs. That's yes, thank you. Yes, you know. and I put pants on. There was a moment there where I did flinch to pull pants on to do this interview. Yes. <laughs> Um, well done on this show. I I, I love um, I love seeing you in this because like you're the you're I'd class you as the normal one in this show because there's a lot of <laughs> crazy people at barbecues going on around you. Mm -hmm. There there really is. You know, it's funny. I felt like Karen was this very grand departure from who I was, and then as the season unfolded, it terrified me because I was like oh God, we're not really that different. And I way judged her. I thought she was crazy and weird. Well, I guess it says a lot about me. <laughs> but but yeah, the, to be an astronaut's wife in 1969, yeah. there's a lot of pressure on these ladies and and some are melting down because you know, their, their hubbies are over in Florida running around and yeah. things like that. And, and But you're quite stable. I mean, Karen has her, her, the thing is, is I think she wants to be able to melt down. And in the first season, I, I always viewed them as like the perfect statues as you walked in, like what they had to uphold, the, you know, the NASA, the housewife, the everything, you know, can never get a divorce, can never speak about therapy, can't do this, can't do that, women only do this. And I think that she held so tightly and fervently to those beliefs that eventually it all crumbled because she was very unchanged and unmoved and and um you know i i could relate to fighting for something you believe in i obviously don't believe in her beliefs <laughs> right <yeah. laughs> um but but i understood that you know and, and so in that i felt like oh shoot or am i a lot more like her because i think she's crazy <laughs> well, I, I like i like her you know, yeah uh, you are crazy maybe you know, so I'm trying to work out. Yeah, yeah. Are you were you you were born in Minnesota. You're a Minnesota chick, but then moved to yeah. Texas. So yeah. So my my parents divorced, and I I lived between a small town of 700 people in Laverne, Minnesota, uh, where I would work on my dad's dairy farm, and right. then uh, I was raised the other part of the time in Houston, Texas. Right. Um, wow. So I had two very different lives. Yeah. Jeez, your summer vacations must have been awesome. You know, like yeah. Like no. My summer vacations were awful. My summer vacations consisted of putting on rubber boots, walking around in cow manure, and taking care of cows for yep. eight hours a day. Yep. You're, you're a milker. Yeah, good job. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, well, so I'm not yeah. sure that that qualifies as like a fun summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm a son of a dairy farmer as well. And uh, and then I moved to into the town and then I yeah. never touched a cow again. But, you know, the, the, the smell as a boy was very distinct. Oh, very, it's very distinct. Um, and, and it never leaves you like the slightest hint and I'm instantly brought back to my entire childhood. You know, what's funny though, I wouldn't change it for the world. I was talking yeah. to somebody like, I got to have experiences. Nobody would know how to help birth a calf and like artificially inseminate a cow, how to preg check, which is pregnant check a cow. Like I know things from a five, seven year old onward that nobody, you can't get. That's like life experience. That's right. You're like, and, and now yeah. you're an astronaut's wife. Like it's, it's <laughs> unbelievable. What is know? life? Like, yeah, it's amazing. Do you, does your, um, do, do fans come out of the woodwork for you in weird places? Because you've been on about three huge fandom shows. Does that, yeah. is, is that, weird to you add to your weirdness no no it's not it's not weird to me i think it's weirder for them because they're very much so like like identify usually people identify with like one very specific show mm -hmm. and they refuse to identify me as on anything else um so usually it's like but you're married to so and so how dare you you know like yelling at me for being a different character right. um and and i get it you know i have ross and rachel forever that's yeah. fine right. i get that it's not real um i, I usually know. don't yell at people or like well, shows that i've died on and then people find me and they're like oh my god i'm so happy to see you're alive like um yeah, I didn't. That wasn't real life. Like no. I'm, I'm still here. Well, well you're <laughs> a top happened. Minnesotan, a top Minnesotan, top Houston chick uh, lady, yeah. I should say, and uh, a great uh, cow lover. So yes. thank you.
I am. Yes, of course. <laughs> Thanks, Chantel. Awesome. Thank All you so right. much. Bye. Take care. Bye.